Okay. So one area that people find issues is the test ng I think another one is the, the pump. Let's first start with the pump. All right. So your pump should not have any red at all. If you are having any red on your pump, yeah, there seems to be an issue. So for instance, if I do something like that, you get red like that. So there's an issue with that. So you should not have any red at all. So that means something is wrong. So, and I don't advise using this. I'm not sure, I've not used it before, so it's not working. So, it's because some people, oh, okay, I mean, do that. So, so, but first thing you do, first check is that. Then, let's say I do this. So now, you will see, yeah, I've got that updating. So that is updating my Maven resp uh, repository. So you should be able to see that. I think I've already set my auto import, right? But if you haven't got that set up, once you, you make any changes here, you should see that pop up here that says import de dependencies or auto import. I think that, that's the two things that you see there. So you can now import the dependencies. So, so if you if you see find any issue, what you, you could do is the same thing I've done. If you have six point fourteen point three, yeah, change it to six point fourteen point two, right? Then that should start kick start, yeah. That should kick start. So once that finish, and you can change it back to three again. But before you leave here, ensure that everything is black and blue. There's no red at all. And also ensure that from here, nothing is impending. So you can click on, if you say one process is running, open it. If it says updating, then you need to wait until it finishes. So you may make sure that everything is fine. So, and also, yeah, also, nothing is running. So, your Maven is installed successfully, and that's the first thing to do. That's the first thing that you need to ensure. Because if that is not finished, then you might have issues with your code or your build. That is first thing. So, and then I can change back to three. So, now, So what you now need to do after this one is to check your test engine. But however, I think be, careful, um, be sure that you actually check this. I think I sent the link to this one minute. Let me check. So just to I think I sent Okay, I'm going to send it again to to the post. I'll post it again. Okay, I'll 
Oh my gosh, share my screen again. Apologies, I think my screen just crashed, so I'm back right now, so one minute. So I can't see some, okay. Okay, can, can you see my screen now? Okay, one minute, I think it's loading. No screen, no sound. So, uh, wow, it's not sharing my screen. Sorry, one minute, I have to log out again and come back. In. So, yeah, can everyone hear me now? Okay, cool. So, one minute, I'm, cool. I'm trying to close down some of the window I opened. So, then I'll share my screen again. Because it seems when I share the screen, it just crashes.
One minute, please. So I've just started recording. I open IntelliJ, click on File, click on New, click on Projects, then click on Maven at the left-hand side. So that's what you have, and that takes you to this point. Then the next thing, just click on New. So Group ID, I said you do com dot give. So that's not even you could do dev. That's because that's going to be so. So this is kind of the website that you are going through. So even to make it easy, I'll just say com.givery.com. Yeah, just. So then what am I doing? So the ActiveFat ID, I can say, So that's what I want to implement today. So keep it wish list, then the list like that. So next and the also is the project name and then my idea where you store your location. Then you click on finish. So Okay, so now you have enter the group ID, enter the click next. So that's what we've just done. And then from there, you have your action you to open in this window or next window. So if you haven't got anyone anything open, so that's fine. So then I click on new window. So now the first thing that you have is your palm being open to you. So one, what you see is the project name, but this is actually the palm. So for instance, if you extend that, so you see the palm.xml. If you click on that, because some people will be expecting to see palm.xml as the header here, but you don't see that. You see the project name as the, which is what you have here. That's what is displayed. So everything, our group ID, that comes on the form, then the Active ID also comes into it, and your version also comes into it. So these three sections is what you've entered just now. This is kind of standard header for your POM, so you don't need to do anything with that. So, but this is what we just entered, so that is fine. So the next one is like, let's try to see what these are. One, we know this is our project, right? So the next one is another folder called idea, which is for IntelliJ. You don't need to worry about that. The next one is your SRC, which is that one. That's where you have your source code in. So you can extend that. When you extend that, you have your main and test folder. Developer code goes into the main, your test code go into the test folder. So that's why you don't need to worry about what goes into this one. So then into the test folder, you want to extend the test folder. You have your Java folder. 
So this way you start to write your code now. So first thing first, before we start writing our code, let's try to first update our form. Let's try to first update our form and see what we're going to use for our form. So I say one, you will see when you first create your form, you see this. So, and you see that uh, import changes and also enable auto import. So once that is displayed, you need to click click once that is displayed you click on import changes to import your changes so and then that is very very fast because there's no more changes to import so now let's get the our pom updated i've told you i've created one pom file and i've put it on the website so which was this one, yeah, this one, all right, okay. So you have your POM, sample POM, which is this one. So if I open that, so if I open that, I've got this sample POM. One thing that you may have is if you just copy and paste everything, then be careful of um, this Actified ID and your group ID. That should be the same thing that you've created. But what I've advised is you copy everything from the dependencies. To the end of that. Control C, which is copy and I paste it after that. That is one way to do that. And you have that being displayed now, import changes. That is one way to do that. Another way is if you are so sure, this is what you can also do. I'll call this one out, delete everything, paste this one. That's one way of doing it. Then, in this one now, I'll copy everything. So this is me copying everything, right? But now what I need to do is to replace this one with the, that one. So those are the two ways you can do it, right? So you only did replace this part. Because when we first created it before, it was this part that was there with the XML and also end with project. You either copy what is inside the dependency to the end of the project, or you copy all the file, then you change it with your, or you can as well just change that one without, yeah. So depending on what you want. So just know what you need to change. So those ones are different for every project that you create. So as long as you are, you got different name and different group ID. So that is what I'm actually, uh, I'm actually telling you right now. So the next one that you need to do now is import your changes. You click on import your changes and that should, should start to import the changes for you. 
So it will be quick if you already imported before. So like my in my own case, it's so quick. So and that's it. Hi, Victoria. Okay, someone said, uh, Victoria said he mistakenly click on auto, enable auto. I think that should be fine. So what's going to do that? It's going to auto uh, import it, which is okay. So you don't need to worry about that because sometimes people forget, forget to import it. But in your own case, it's going to import that automatically for you. So you, still be, you should be fine. So what that means that you don't need to be clicking on import every time you change your um, palm. Some of the text is red. Adam, which text are you talking about? Okay. It's gone gray after I strode. Okay, that's fine. Okay, it's fine. So what you could do is, uh, for instance, if you have anything on the line or red, like this one I've got right now, you need to fix it. Nothing should be red or underlined. Yet. Everything should be gray or blue. So you need you need to be sure that everything is is fine at this point. So I think yeah, the issue was there's some gaps. That's one also, and this has to start from the very top. And that it's another issue. Okay, so now this is where the chips are down. So I've changed my palm. Even I think in the process of maybe Victoria distracting me, this can happen at work actually. Because one, I was about to edit something, and Victoria said, "Hey, excuse me, I've got issues." And then what did I do? I attended to Victoria, and because I attended to Victoria, I didn't know. Oh, I, I lost my thought. I didn't know where I was before. And now I'm I landed myself an issue where this is showing red. And to be honest, that's not where the issue is. <laughs> this one can take you like a whole day to figure out what this is right, this is fine. But the problem is what exactly is your issue? So one is that insert required child tag artifact ID. So oh I remember that I'm a, there's Active ID and Group ID here, which is now gone, right? It's missing. Yeah. So that is was that was the issue. But you need to look at what the issue is. Issue can be different. It can be similar things. So and that's why sometimes, yeah, maybe one way or the other, if you're in this situation, you could just go back to where you you were before, revert your changes, and start from there, or try to fix it if you if you know how to fix it. One good way, I'll just undo all my changes, come go back to where I was before, and then I say, okay, then that's just showing error. I don't want that. So, and that is the, that's the state I want to be. So, and this is very, very practical situation, right? Uh, Abdul also know that, okay, the, I think you mentioned that right now, also the missing project. So yeah, that is, is a practical issue that happened at work, that someone distracted you and you came back to your code, you couldn't even get out your thoughts again. So uh, you need, now need to look at what the issue is. So sometimes sometime you see developer plug in because they don't want to be distracted because that happened. Once you are distracted, you need to get out your thoughts again where you are and everything. So that's the thing. 
So you can see now, when I change my palm, and I have to import again, Victoria said, okay, yes, she has already enabled auto import. When you enable auto import, then you don't need to be clicking import changes every time. It does that for you automatically. That's the beauty of auto import. So, but however, you need to be able to be checking the status here, yeah, even when you're auto import, that everything here yeah, is not showing any, that the process is still running. Because if your process is still running, and you go and you now try to do Maven install, then you get an issue also. That's what you need to be careful. So that is clear, is clear now. First thing you do, when you create your Maven, right? Or so, sorry, when you create your project, and now you check your palm, and then you copy and paste what you have on your palm, and you paste it here, what you have in that particular here, when you have in this file, you just copy and paste it. So once that is copy and pasted, so you can change the group ID and also activate ID to correspond to what you've created. Oh, yes, I think you could, you could right click and say maybe re-import. Yeah, and I think you can, you can also do that. Uh, also, I think you can also do like that. I think there's a Maven around there. So, yeah, I think that there is Maven around. So this will work. Okay, yeah, it's at back. So you can also do like that to import it again. So that's another thing. So there are different ways to import it also, yeah. So thanks, uh, I think that's me, man. Yeah, so you can right click here and scroll down to Maven and re-import it again, or right click on your Maven and then you re-import your Maven code. This is very, very fundamental, it's very, very important. So, so don't get that mixed up, that's very, very important. So now, quickly, last week I did not mention, I did not actually speak about the different elements or properties in your Maven code. I'm going to do that quickly. Those ones are very important. So in your Maven code, you have all the libraries that you are going to use. So those are in your dependencies. So now you have this tag, which is dependencies. Dependencies, and you now have different dependencies that you want to use. The first one is your test ng. So these are different codes written by different people also, like the same way you, we are writing ours also with group ID, with artifact ID. Someone has written test ng in Java and you are trying to use it. So for you to use it in your code, you need to bring it in as a dependencies in your POM file. So that's what you are trying to do. So you are bringing it as a dependency in your POM file. So this is one test ng. We are using test ng. We are using uh, Selenium. We are using Selenium. We are using Cucumber. We are using Cucumber JVM. So we are also using JUnit and also Cucumber Test NG. So and then also um, Cucumber Reporting. So now, as you can see, some people will be talking about how do I build my CV? This is you building your CV. This is a technical snap, uh, snapshot of what you are going, you are using. So for if you are able to build this you will have been able to say that I've used TestNG, I've used Selenium, I've used um, Cucumber for Java, and I've used Cucumber JVM, or I've used JUnit, and I've also, I'm going to be using Cucumber TestNG, and also I'm going to be using Cucumber Reporting NG, and also uh, now I've used Maven also with that also TestNG. So that's those ones are those things that you put on your CV, what you've been able, we are going to use here. And I will show you as we go along how, how we are going to be using them. So, but these are different libraries that we are going to use. And these ones also, they go into your, they go into your CV to see what you've been able to use. So it goes into your technical snapshot of things that you've, you've used.
Okay. So my mom said he, he saw this before and it got lost. I, I think you are now found. So congratulations, my mom. So for <laughs> for because every every one of us have have been lost before. I was also, but this, this uh, training is all about eye opener for everyone. So and that's what I'm going to derive or achieve by going through this with, with you. So it's kind of eye opener. So I try to make it easy as possible. So. Yeah. So at this point, everyone should be able to know how to set up their pump. That should be clear. So at this time, you should not move away if you have red at this point. Try to fix it. Try to fix it. Uh, if you is showing red every time, copy the file again and make sure there is no gap at the top because in some cases, if you have this gap at the top, you need to make sure you remove it. So don't leave any gap and make sure the file is the same one that you've copied. And so and also we, we talk about the version later because that will be another issue. But the one I copied and put on the website is working in terms of the version. So you should be able to see the version working together. But later we talk about how to meet uh, match all this version and everything because that also sometimes creates issues with you. So now talking about different properties also in your test folder. So you have scope, right? Scope, it's your level of um, moving goals that you want to set. I'm going to talk about that. So this is saying that, okay, this particular uh, dependency would only be used in a test goal. So it's only when you are running your test or when you are doing maven test that's what, at that level that's what this is going to be used. The one that has not got any scope that means it's open to um, to be used anywhere. So that means the same thing. Gay unit is only is used in your test goal. So I someone also asked what is maven goal and I said so this is this training is not about maven. So if you want to know more about Maven, just Google Maven goals, and they are going to tell you about different goals that you can use in Maven, whether Maven install, Maven test, Maven compile, so different things that you're going to do. But we're going to be using them. So I think as you use them, Google about them, and then also know what they do, so that if you go for interviews or you're at work, you'll be able to actually know why you're actually doing that. So of course, as a tester, um, everyone should know what test is. So when you are, you want to test your code, you use the Maven test, and there's other goals that you also need to use. So and this is when the scope of for this is compiled. So you can see that the scope is compiled because there's test, there's um, compile. So I'm going to show you quickly how you get this um, scope also out. So think. If you go to view, uh, pro, yeah, tools window, and you click on Maven projects, yeah. So Maven projects, so that displays that part. So at the right hand side, you have your package, your project is there, you have your project, and then you have life cycle. So this is Maven life cycle. So, and it's displayed under the Maven projects. So this Maven life cycle, you have your clean, validate, compile, test, package, verify, so that's it. So the first thing you run your test, you want to have a clean test and no error and everything, that's fine. So now I can, if I double click on that, I say clean. So that brings a terminal for me that I report what I'm doing. So and it's saying okay, it's finished with that error. So and I would advise that before you move away from this, before you do anything, try to do a clean and to be sure that okay, there's no error at all here. There's no error, then you got everything there. So and same thing with validate and also to test. Victoria says, any reason I don't have dependencies among the options? 
I don't understand what you mean among the options. Which options are we talking about? So, and if I do test also, Okay, all right, this is fine, right? This is fine because one, when I do my test, it's trying to go to test ng, but we haven't done the test ng. So what I would say is that before you go away from there, make sure you do your clean and there's no error. So that is how to go from here. So just do a clean. So test will do later. Under Maven project, there's no option. So, uh, you should, you should be able to see the um, left side and everything. So I'll go through again. If you go to view, tools, window, two windows. So then you see maybe in project. So, okay, that is. So then you should see that, that should come. But if you don't see anything, I would say just click on that again. So refresh and also for auto import. So I think it should it should be there if you if you have done things properly. So all right. So we go quickly from there. So that is the first thing. You got your palm set up, right? So now the next level, like I've said, now it's your. Oh, Uh, sorry, one minute. I okay. Okay. So the next level is your test ng, your test ng. So what you need to do also is right click on your project, new file. So you want to call that test ng dot xml. Enter. That creates test ng XML for you. Then go to the file again. You have your test ng sample. Open that. So let's copy that one. So then we paste it here. Okay. So now, at this level now, we not have next thing to do. This, this also should not show any red at all. But it's showing red right now because we haven't got this um, test runner created. Okay. So we move up now. So I think part is right. Uh, I will advise, um, can someone please help me write the notes as in, so that I can send it to me, if that's okay, please. So I'll just quickly go through it again, so to see, can you write it on the notes? Someone has been writing the notes, I think I've left my notes. Yeah, so. So yeah, and yeah, if you can do that for me, please. So, uh, so now, so you have your test class, right? So the next one now is for us to create our runner class. So that also resides on your test and Java. Right click, new package, and I call it runner or runners then also inside that i want to have my java class which i call test runner so that is that uh, created so then 
if I go back to my test engine, that is now green. So all good. So I can as well try to clean and see there's no error. Cool. So even if I try to test now and see what I am still missing. Brilliant. Initially, before it was complaining about our test engine, we've added our test engine now. So, and we've also put our test runner. Everything is good. Okay. I'll do it again. Someone said I should go through the test runner again. So, okay. Let's do it again. So, I'll do that. Delete. So, don't delete it. <laughs> it's not part of the process. It's not part of the steps. So I'm trying to just go back again, so so that someone is not going to be watching this video and say, okay, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it deleted it. I need to delete it again. So that's not. I'm trying to go back to where we are before someone actually said that bit is not clear. So Abdul, please go away. Oh, uh, um, yeah, um, fire. I may test runner in lower case. That's fine. So let's say I've just say it may test runner in lower case. Let's try to do that also. So now so let's say I do uh, package runners and then I create a new class test runner or, or even let's say I just say runner or test runner just to make it I, I think it's fine depending on what you put it and I do this so this is the name you put it so I just want to use a different name to see how this thing works together so yeah of course I do it's going to show in red because you are not using the right thing okay I'll go through it again so it's case sensitive, it's sure. So now, so let's say this is what I put right now, which is totally different from what is there. So, and I say, okay. So if I go to my pawn, so this is where my package is, runners. So if I go to my test ng, it's still showing you right. This runner is fine, right? But this test runner is not fine. So this runners, is coming from your package but inside my package is now finding my test runner because there's no class which is called test runner so what i've got is test underscore runner so which means that i need to change that to that so you can see it's going so if paraventure let's say this is my test runner. Let's say this is what is there, and this is what, and I said, yeah, everything like that. So then what I need to do is to change it also here. Like that. So it is case sensitive. You need to know that. So, and I'll change that box. Okay. So there's another question. Okay. Okay. So uh Okay, cool. So I'll call let's Come back. Uh, Momon, uh, if you can tell me what... Okay, someone is saying I should deal with the question on Saturday. <laughs> I think it's very, very important. So we, we try to finish this also today. So, okay. So uh, send your um, the error message in there so I can see if I can handle it later. So, okay. 
So let us continue. So this time around, so we've been able to do things now. We've been able to do our pawn. We've done our test NG. And also, we've done our test runner. So you should be able to do with that error message and even validate and compile even to test without having error message. So so even if I do install or verify, I shouldn't get an error message. But yeah. Okay, so Okay, so status login log for J configuration file not found. Login. Okay, so this is talking about log for j2 so okay this is a different issue so we we'll talk about this one later just you just need to set your system properties but let's continue with this so uh, at this time if you can do your test and you got no error then that's fine we we'll talk about the log for j later it's a login um, library that we might use also i think intellij also use that so okay so we need to move um, quickly right now. So the next one now, it's now where you need to start your cucumber. So I said one, you need to check your live um, plugin. Click on file, I think. Yeah, um, file, program structure, I think, you know. Yeah. So in my own case, I think it's totally different. So um, if you are using Windows, Linux, because sorry, for instance, I work, I use um, Linux environment. So on Linux, you see file and you see settings here. Yeah? I'm not sure what is on Windows because it's been a long time I've, I've, I've used this on Windows. So but on mark that I'm actually using, you have to click on the IntelliJ idea and you click on preference. But I think on Windows, you will also see file and settings. That's what you will see. Okay, yeah. So you see file and settings, that's what um, you will see on Linux, on on Windows rather. So then you go to, you click on plugin and you search for Cucumber and you click on Cucumber for Java and then you click on install. So and you install that. So that, so that now you now have a plugin for your IntelliJ that works with Ciao. Um, that was Cucumber. So the next one now is now for you to now create different packages and folders that you want to use. 
So we've created the one for our uh, runner class. Then we need to create one for so one minute. Think we need a resource create a There's a question plugin for it is plugin for you you just that cucumber uh, plugin for cucumber that's what you need to to write so So is that okay? So you go to preference and that uh, quickly. So you search for cucumber. I think that was a question, and that's it. And you click on install. So okay. So to go quickly from there. So on your test, you have Java, and the next one you create another uh, for another directory rather, and you call it resources. And you call it resources. Then after that, you right click on that folder and you make that folder a resource root. So that's now resources root. So that's where you put all your resources in. So your feature file is a resource. So then the next one, you create a new file and you call it, let's say registration, registration. dot feature so that should have a cucumber um, sign because yeah, I, I was looking at it, this this stuff in that work so actually said that's really a cucumber look um, sign isn't it it looks green and there's some seed inside so and yeah so that should have that so then at this point now, there are things that you need to write. For the first thing is your feature. You have autocomplete. You can autocomplete by pressing enter. So um, registration is my feature registration. So I can put some detail. This is a test for the registration page so then the next one is your scenario I said the scenario scenario outline we're going to go about on um, talk about scenario outline later but let's only use scenario so scenario let's say invalid registration Enter. So in your BDD, which is behavioral driven development, behavioral driven development, there are different keywords that you use. And I've mentioned about feature, mentioned about scenario. So next one is given when then. So you have a clause there, which is given when then clause. Question, do we have to create feature file under, under resource first, or do we just create the registration? 
I don't understand. I think what I did was create, I created this resource directory first, then I created this registration dot feature second. That's what I did. So your both questions is the same thing. First thing you create resource directory and you make it a resource um, resources root. Then after that you create your registration inside your resource root. So by right clicking and creating on that a new so I can say login now dot feature. So that's me creating another feature file. So you want to do that again and say, just right click on the resource and click on new and you put another one here and say, oh, let's say wish list that feature. So of that is clear. Okay, cool. So now going forward, so we are on the registration. Okay. So I said it, oh, that oh, you have your given when then clause. So the first thing is your precondition, which is your given clause. Given, which is your precondition, what do you want to do? Given I access the website given I logged in, for instance, if you want to do a wish list. So you put your precondition in the giving clause. So, and you put your action in the when clause and you put your assertion in the then clause. So precondition is what you need to do before you start your testing. Then your when is your steps, what you need to do to actually confirm what you are testing. So then also the assertion is your when you compare your expected behavior with your actual behavior so now going from there we are giving i access gift dot com then when i click on registration link and I fill in all required details. So let's change that to maybe valid. Then I should be able okay, let's say and I think just what? Now, this is where people find it difficult, right? So you've written everything in English, but by my, you can see even some people are saying, I can't see the bulb, but me just click, I just click on it, but the bulb is showing, right? So, but you can see the bulb. I don't know why, but if you cannot see the bulb, what you could do, press Alt and press Enter. That's what I've just done. If you cannot see the bulb highlighted here by clicking on it, click. Let me see. Okay. Even I don't know why you cannot because I can see. But where? If you cannot see the bulb, press Alt and press Enter. Okay. So you have two options. Create your step definition which is going to create that line or create all step definitions, which is going to create everything. Let's try to create everything as they go. Create all step definitions. 
So then, where do you want to create it? So now, I thought, you can see, yeah, I want to create it onto where my step definition in a folder called step definition. But I haven't created that folder called step definition. So I can cancel this and go back to my Java folder and create a new package and I call it step definition. So now I can do this. Alt, enter, create all. So now I can go to where I want it to be saved. Step definition, that's where I want. Open. So just to confirm, it is the right place. Yes, it is. And what name do I want to call it? I can say um, maybe registration step definition registration steps. And I say okay. Abdul said that doesn't always work. What doesn't always work? I don't know. So, okay. This is one of the issues that you are going to find. I bet you, right, this is one of the issues you are going to find. I don't like this, but this is one of the issues. But enter. Okay. So, I'll... The light bulb button. Okay. One approach that we're going to use, I will tell you right now, which is is going to be a good one, right? So, let's drop this. Okay, I'm going to use a different approach anyway because I don't like I don't like this. So I think I try to make it easy and simple, but Okay, so let's drop this and do it again. Where's my delete? Okay. Okay, cool. So I'll show you a different step. So you don't need to enter. So one thing that you need to do is now Okay, cool. You can see it now. I think you should go to Spec Saver. <laughs> Sorry, I've done. Okay, yeah. So just need to look closely and have a bit of patience so that it should be fine. But however, that's one approach to do it. But I'm going to actually teach you another approach which might be easier, right? So now this everything here is to be mapped. So let's just create a different class. Yeah, in our step definition, create a different class and call the class uh, registration. Registration step. And then that's the. Okay, I think Sylvester says it works for him, so that's fine. It works for you. Yeah, so so that that step should work anyway. But I'm going to do it for another another way. No, that, that, that's fine. I know it, it should work anyway. So I think 
Oh, I've got a very private message. I think you, you should send it to the group, to be honest. So, okay. Well, I think what Sylvester is saying is, so for instance, if you right click, if you press Alt Enter, and you could do that, and that should take you to, let's see, where is that? I want to put that here. Okay. And I can say, okay. Well, it's getting only one, but that's fine. So I can do that again. Okay, that is already mapped and the uh, enter. Okay. Okay, let let let's do it this way. Okay, one minute so so that I don't confuse you. It works sometimes, doesn't work sometimes. Okay, all right. Let, let's go. I think it should work every time, to be honest. So, okay. So, let's retrace our step. One, I'm going to delete this again. So, so everyone, we are at this point, right? So, we got our step def mm, feature file created. The next one is to create your step definition. So, get this. So, we got a few minutes to finish this. Step definition, right? So whether you have the light bulb or you don't have the light bulb, I think that's fine. You can do this and create each one, one after the other, or you create individual ones, that's fine. So or I think I'm not sure. So, but I think to make it easy for people, I will teach you one approach that should be fine, so that it's okay. So, which I think everyone should follow, so that you know, you'll be able to get to the right path. So, this is not going to use the light bulb or your alt enter. So, once you create your feature file, right, and you got that at this level, what you need to do first, let me change, let me correct this um, typo. Okay. So, I've got this. Then what you need to do, you've created your folder for step definitions. Right click on that, click on new, and create your class. Call, call it what you want to call, if you like calling it registration step. So that is that created. So now what you need to do is kind of run your test run your test run your test and see what you get right click on the step on registration feature and run it you should expect it to fail so it's kind of like a way to cheat the system to be honest you should expect it to fail and when it fails it's going to try an exception to you it's going to try an error to you and that is what you're expecting that you've not actually created some step all right so if you have this it's going to say undefined step undefined step undefined step undefined step so you have some undefined steps to to write so then those are the thing so what you now need to do is to now copy is now you said you can implement this meeting step with the snippet below so it's giving you option 
to now do that to so say oh okay this is the snippet you want to implement then you can copy that snippet so all these snippets you can copy and that's it up to that level control C then I go into my method into my class rather so my registration class and I paste there so that is that so if I go to my feature file okay I need to first make sure that doesn't show any right so now you've pasted it here so the next thing you got some error messages because there's some red so you need to now fix them in the same way also that is that you can see by putting my mouse here it's telling me what I need to do I'm using um, mark so it's telling me I think that is command enter is in it or alt, enter or enter so to do that so the same thing I think on window is the same thing also so I press alt enter so and also the same thing that you know that is now green just by pressing alt enter so and what happens is because you need that you need that for that giving to work so and the next one is the when so I can as well press alt enter here and that is also solved or I could do this because I know it's looking for the when so and I can do this dot when so that also is gone so the same thing for the then so I can also import that also import cucumber cucumber.api.java dot en dot then so that also is done but I think to make your life easier just press alt enter on on them alt enter when you want to the same way also this is another one also it's got exception so and it's saying uh you need to press the alt enter to see multiple choices so you just block it and press alt and press enter so it's giving you different you know, options and what you're looking for is the cooking by api one so i will use that and uh, that so then so that is added to this one and that's everything sorted so now if you run your test again so if you want to run your test you run the feature one so run your test again so is the our error message all right okay so let's see what we have on our feature okay all right so it's let's do it again let's run it again it's still good to have error message anyway so because there's still something that we've not actually done okay okay so but I think this is not self-explanatory but I'll show you what the problem is in this case so so yeah so this is now I think it's not supposed to be so but this is going to throw an exception anyway it's going to throw a pending exception because you have that in you can also comment that let's try to clean and see what that brings to us then test is there any options to run on Windows oh 
options to run it. So someone is actually designing other options to run it. First option, yes, I think there are three, three ways or four, actually. I'm going to tell you quickly. Four ways to run it. The first one I've showed you right now, right click on your feature file and click on run. Whether you are using Windows or you are using Mac or Linux, you should see that. You should see that. So you have your also your test, everything, undefined step. And I don't think that's right. Or done. So then click on that. So if I comment it through new exception, I'm expecting that to pass now. So let's do that again. Okay, all right, so I think I don't, that might be an issue here. Yeah. Okay, so what you need to do, let's, let me try to restart that. So one thing uh, we've done, we've got this is our step definition. So once you are able to get this, you are half, halfway done. So the next one is your registration file should, in there, everything should be like black without any, you see, yellow or something like that so yeah so you got everything there so the next one you do your clean build so when you do your clean build it should come out with no error so one thing i got i think this might be an issue so because i've created a file there's nothing there so that's not going to make my to work. Okay, so so remove all the noise. So I only got this one. So let me clean that. So validate. So okay, Victoria asked one question. Uh, is there any other ways to run it in Windows or different way to run it? I said first thing when you want to run it, you run it from here. That's the first thing running from your feature file. So the second way to run is using your runner. The second way to run is using your runner. I think it's still compared. Okay. Okay, I need to resolve. I think there's issue with this. I need to Google and see what that is. I've not seen that error before. So right click and run it from there. That's one way to run it. Another way is to come to your test runner. 
Oh, okay. All right. Cool. So I think we've not actually done this anyway. So yeah, that is a step that's missing. So, so you have not. We've not done our test runner. So I think we got that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Test runner. We got the test runner, yeah, also. Okay. So let's copy that. Okay. Be careful when you are copying that test runner, right? So your class, because this is the class name, so that should be the same thing with with your class. So you have two options whether to copy them one after the other or you remember to change your class i think it's going to try an exception anyway if you don't change your class so i copy that and i'm going to paste it So I need to change that. So you also need to do your test runner. So those are the three things that we need to do. Uh, your pawn, your test engine, and also your test runner. So I think we only created the test runner, there's nothing inside. So that also is very, very important. Then also, in your test runner, what you need to also do is your feature file, location to your feature file. You can see, in my own case, I did not create any level for feature. Sometimes you might create a level for feature and put your feature here. So like that, create new directory and say features. Then you move this inside that. So you move that inside, then that is the same path you have right now. So you have SRC test resources and features. So that is where your feature is. But if you don't have that, you just need to specify the path here. So then your glue is where your step definition is stored. So if you come up here, your step definition is stored at that point. I think that's why it's showing that there's no step at all because you don't have any runner. So you come to this one, your step definition is your glue and that should be that one. So which is your package where your step definition is stored. Then also um, in your test runner, you have to ignore the other one stays exactly there. So then, if I try to run that. See, so that is better. Now it's trying, it's giving me one, two, three, and that one is the one I've not, I've not yet done, which is the last one. So if I go to the registration one, press Alt, Alt, Enter, Oh, hold on. Right click, uh, go to implementation. So I think that's where I've now. So if I remove that, so then I test it again. Uh, 
Okay, so you can see everything is green because I am not asking you to throw any exception. So that's it. So one, maybe other people that find an issue. So look at your test runner, right? Your test runner should have your feature at everywhere. Your feature directory should be, your feature path should be the same thing that you said. If you have resource, for instance, if my you know, registration dot feature hasn't got a uh, feature folder, I, I didn't saw it in the feature folder, then I don't need to signify that, then only goes there. Also, your glue is where you have your step definition, the package that houses your step definition. That's where you, are, you, ask, you need to specify it. And those tools are very, very important for your test to run. So once you get that right, then that should be fine. So what's going to happen is like oh, all these things we have, to, we can address on Saturday and also on Sunday for people that couldn't even get everything sorted on Saturday, even though Sunday is a graduation. So we see, you see, have me to to work with you on Sunday also if you are around. So good. Uh, any question before we leave? So as you can see, what we've gone through, I'll go, I'll go through it again quickly. So, but any question? So, and also, if there's no question, I also, I would want you to signify, I think some people have confirmed that they are coming on Saturday and on Sunday. So if you can also signify interest that, okay, you are coming to me, that would be good, maybe in, private chat so just to be reconfirmed I need to give yeah the names to to the organizer to arrange so if you have not done that or if you don't if you think you can if you are in this group and you want please just reconfirm that if you are coming to on Saturday and also on Sunday so Saturday is going to be the workshop we do introduction and everything So, okay, so the last, uh, yeah, so please do that and let me know if you are going to come and if you are um, going to be available on Saturday and on Sunday. So Saturday, like I said, we go through this uh, introduction again. We go through the setup. We've not actually finished the setting up for Cucumber, so uh, we've not done the reporting, so because I want to do everything before we start the internship. And also at the, I, I would also want to mention, if you are going to do the internship, I would say Saturday is very, very important for you. And I, I would also say it's very, very compulsory because what I've seen in the last part is that people that did not come for the workshop actually drag people back because they haven't got their environment set up, they haven't got everything set up, then it's going to be like, okay, uh, when people are moving forward, they've not actually got anything. So it's very, very important and compulsory if you're going to be successful. If I, I'm going to actually take you for the internship, I would need to see a bit of seriousness for you to come for the uh, um, workshop. So and apologies if I didn't actually, um, you are not selected because it didn't come because I want if this training is free I, I I get that but you need to show commitment if we show uh, I take my two hours every week even more than that even to prepare for this so if you cannot show up on Saturday it also I, I think it's fair enough to say uh, it's okay for you to be in the program in, in this training but I won't commit to internship with you so if you have not confirmed for Saturday, please do confirm to me, and that is very, very important. Are we going to be assigned personal computers for the workshop? Really? You need to come with your computer on that day, right? <laughs> See? You need to come with your computer because this is the computer that you are going to take. Even if you are assigned a computer on that day, you are not going to take it home, right? You are not going to take it home. So, and the point is for you to have a computer 
that you are going to be working with, right? So unless you want us to buy a computer for you, and it's, I think it. <laughs> Yeah, so please come with a computer that works. I, I, I've said that before. Come with a computer that works so so that we can set this up for you. It's going to take a long time to get that. So, and also, we'll have time to have a chart and also to put, yeah, some other people I've met. I met them personally. I know that, okay, um, this is the that particular person, I met mean, people like two or three times before I could recall it, them. That's another thing. So there will be time for break. Yeah, there will be time for break. There will be little food or some something for us to yeah uh, eat while we are doing that. It's going to be two to seven, so there will be time for break. It's going to be a workshop, so it's not going to be normal classroom. So it's going to be bring your laptop. So it's going to be bring your laptop. We we'll go through it one after the other. So, so issues that people have are totally different. So it's not going to be like okay, let's me chatting with you, chatting over you again. No, it's not going to be the same thing. It's going to be like what issue have you got with your laptop? What is your situation? And also, even if we we can also have time to deliberate on uh, career skill because I know people have got different things also in terms of what their motivations are, what they want to do, or what their career paths are. So that also is going to be like a one-to-one -one with myself and Path and also other guys that are there also. Some people that why advanced also may bring their CV and can quickly have a look. So so come by yourself, prepared. Do as much as installation or setup that you can do. If you cannot finish anything, that's fine. Some people take time. But after Sunday, I want everyone to be able to say, I've set up. One, I will not set them up for you. I'll put you in the right direction because this, when you go for interviews, you should be able to say that, yes, I did this. And you know how to do them. And also, knowing how to do them means that you've encountered different issues and you know those issues. So that's why in some cases, I let people to go, to go have encountered those issues. Then when they encounter those issues, then I'll be able to solve them, point them in the right direction. So by Sunday, I think I'll, that's what I've, I've been able to do. By Sunday, everyone should be able to get ed grant running. By Monday, the internship starts. So to be honest, if your PC is not up to scratch by Monday, I doubt you're going to be on the internship. To be honest, I, I'm going to doubt that. So I'm going to send emails to people by Monday to reconfirm that they've got everything working and everything. So it's very, I can't really overemphasize that. That is very, very important for you to be at the internship. And also, if you can also, you also, I'm um, also, please come for the graduation. Come on. Appreciate people that are graduating. You are going to graduate also. People will come. And also, it's also time for you to meet with people that are graduating on that particular day. Some of them has got a job. So this is what happens when they get a job. It's so possible that maybe when you enter a project, they are going to recruit for five, four, three or four people. You are the first person. So they'll be telling you that, oh, do you have people that you work with or something like that? So for instance, I know Memo. It's very, very articulate in, in the group. But I haven't met him in person, right? The same thing with people. Who is this memo? Who is this guy that's, who is that dude that's always shouting at me? So that's time for you to meet those guys on Sunday to actually say, oh, okay, this is you. Okay, then it's also possible you might also be in an interview with them. <laughs> they don't know you. <laughs> that's it. So it's a network, and I've been able to... Yeah, someone is asking me a question this morning and say, do you know people work in this area, in this area? I said, I will ask around. So I think we've got that network of people right now for with the level of experience that I have got and also with Path also, we have network people. So on Sunday, most of them will also be coming. So it's, it's good for you to meet them, exchange numbers with them, talk to them. Also, when you have a personal relationship with us and talk with them, they're going to actually put faces to you and that's all. So 
place come on Saturday, come on Sunday also. Some people will not be in on Saturday because they are not in the program because by the fact that they've already got a job or by the fact that they cannot actually leave it. But they will be coming also on Sunday. So please do come also. I, I, so and if you are coming with visitors or with people, let me know also so that we can get up for them. So, yeah, thank you so much for, for the time. So I, so any other question? I'll just take two minutes to ramp up the last part because I'm going to say it's too fast. So because I'm careful about the time. So apologies, you know, in the next five minutes, would, I would release you. So any question before I do the last part once again? Okay, cool. So, all right, cool. This is what we've done today, right? The first thing we did was create a new project. Create a new project. New project. We did that. So, we click on next. And you put what you want to put. It says com dot gifts reach and our project today we call it wish list and maybe this is now the second one and we click on next and we click on finish so we open it as a new window so then we updated our pawn. I'm going to switch to the last one we did now. So, updated our pawn with this. And when we updated our pawn, we have import on dependencies or auto import being displayed there. So, we make sure we import the dependencies. So, we did that. Then, also, we came here also, we created our test ng. So that is, you go to File, New, and you create your file. So for, for the test engine, I will put that from, you put this particular um, code inside that. Then also, then we create our runner class. Uh, then when we create our runner class, we make sure the runner class is the same as what is being displayed here as a runner class. So that is very important. Then after that, we created our step definition um, um, package. Then also, without the step definition um, steps, without the step definition steps. So the next one we create our we created our resource um, folder. So what we did was to right click on test, click on new directory. Then after we created and we created that, we right click on that resource and we now say make resource as I think yeah it was, then it was um, resource it actually resource root make as resource root so we make it a resource root then yeah we did this one later so right um, create a feature folder and then create your feature um, step. So you now create your feature file. So then after that, we created our given when then clause as it is right now. So then from there, we run it. When we, we run it, so, and it displays, so I'm going to do that one again and say like this right now. So this is now a new step. So you run it as a step, uh, maybe as a test or clean. So when you do that, it's going to ask you that there's still one step missing. So you, let's come up to the top. Okay, there is one step missing. So then, yeah, so we have all those steps missing, yeah. So, but in this case, it's only one that's missing now, so that we've not done. So we copy those steps, you copy those steps, so that are not yet implemented. Oh, I said you can implement this snippet below. So we copy them and 
also in our step definition, we create our um, registration step. And then when that created, then we paste our step here. And that's what we did. And of course, we expect to throw exception because we've not done anything on them. So if you want to be green without throwing exception, we recommend it out. But in a normal situation, you want to leave it so that you throw exception so you can put your uh, normal step there. So that is what we did. So then also, we had issue because one is like our test runner was not yet created. So what we now did was to create our test runner. So in the in the first instance, this is what you're going to have. You're going to have the only the. So you're going to have something like that. You're going to have something like that. So in your test, um, in your test runner. So you now copy what we have. what we have here and you paste it in your test runner so that then we have something like so that makes us to have something like this so yeah something like this so in this case right now you need to now make sure it works so which is you don't need that one so it's just I think the best option is just to copy everything and change your test runner and change the class. So like so, uh, one, copy everything. As long as, as long as we got the same package name, that's fine. So we paste that here. So paste. So the only thing I need to change here is my class. So to be the same thing as what I've put in my class, and which is test underscore runner. So which also ties to what I've got in my test engine. Then that is that. So then everything should be fine. Then you can clean and build. That's what you want to, to do. And Okay, so yeah, that's everything that we've done today. So, um, so yeah, so we we'll see you on Saturday and Sunday. Have a good evening.